What's up, Comic Wow? This is Gigi coming at you from Baltimore Comic Con 2015. We've had a fantastic weekend. We're now closing out day three, and I'm very excited to be joined by Vivek Tuwari, who is hey the author of The Fifth Beetle. This is super exciting because before we even get into his work, we want to talk about last night here at Comic Con was the Harvey Awards. For those who don't know, I don't know who you are that don't know if you're a comic <laughs> fan and watching our channel, but this is the big award show that goes on yeah. in Baltimore. It's like the little Oscars of the comic industry and yep. you were the host yes it was an incredible honor what was that like first of all when you got the call about that somebody oh, it, was, it was an email okay and i literally no joke i thought it was a pra i thought it was like a joke yeah. i thought it was a joke yeah. you uh -huh. know like um, someone's writing it like he, my, he, he. <laughs> my background is in the music industry mm -hmm. and i literally thought it was like one of my old friends from mtv and i was being punked yeah i was like this just cannot <laughs> be real like i read it three times and i checked the email address and i was like i think this is real yeah you know? it's kind of like the sweepstakes I just, you I just couldn't it's like believe you won $10,000 and could nobody not believes believe it. it. Yeah, that's so it cool. It felt like us. You know, th we've had a really good run with the Fifth Beetle for the past couple of years. We've mm -hmm. won a lot of awards. Um, it's been very happy and humbling. Uh, but I really felt like this was like a spoof. I'm like, I'm living in some surreal spoof of my life. So you, know? you were like, once you realized it was real, you were like, okay, let me check my schedule. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, I'm doing this. Let me see if I have to cancel anything. I'm there. Because you've some big things in I your career. There. We're talking Tony's, producing on Broadway. Thank you. And where does the Harvey's rank in that? Oh, my like, God. I mean, it's kind of all the way at the top. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was here at the Harvey's last year, and, and I was uh, very lucky enough that the book won two awards, mm -hmm. and that was amazing. But being asked to host, I was like, that, I mean, it still doesn't feel real. It still uh -huh. feels like a pinch me, you know, was this weekend a dream kind of moment? Uh-huh. I mean, it was, uh, it, it's right at the top of my professional achievements. Well, the word right on the street at the, was, right at the top. is everybody wants you to come back and host again. Everybody who attended, they were like, literally, it was a fantastic evening. They thought you did such a great job in hosting. I feel like a loser because I was supposed to go, but it was a family Sorry. conflict where I was supposed to go to Sunday. You had a lot of family so, there. Yes, Your family did. represented. Yes, my family represented, but it was my niece's one year birthday, so I was supposed to go. There. It all fell apart. And well, now, look who's embarrassed that well, she wasn't no there for this amazing event. Uh, on, on Baltimore Comic Con or the Harvey Awards, but I'll come back anytime you want me. Yes, You heard perfect. it here first. Good. I, I love need a, doing I it. I need a redo of you so I can experience it in person. I'll come back anytime you want me. It was a joy. It really yeah. was a joy. Mm -hmm. And I also have to say, just um, as a host, like, I was given a really amazing evening. Uh -huh. You know, I had the great honor and joy of introducing Jules Pfeiffer to give an award, the Harvey Kurtzman Award, to Will Eisner, you wow. know, and that award was accepted by Will's niece and nephew. I mean, so awesome. I, I had the honor of introducing Nellie Kurtzman, Harvey Kurtzman's daughter, to give a, the Humanitarian Award to Dennis Kitchen, who founded the CBLDF and has been a caretaker of Harvey's legacy. Who's, I mean, all of these people are heroes of mine and, and heroes and legends in the comic industry so I you know I, I introduced Darwin Cook to give an award to Russ Heath for God's sakes I mean like so basically I the got evening was night. just okay I for you, good night, <laughs> you know it, to be able to you're to, just saying it was just I, okay for you it was it was a, it was a really a dream come well, true well I can't it imagine we can find true. a better host here thereafter from the passion you have you feel like you're still riding on a cloud from uh, it yeah look I mean at the the yes I'm like the author of the fifth Beatle and right. I've got well, these credits but like the truth is like I am a fanboy geek yeah just like everybody else but here. But that's what and, makes you and, so good you at know. what you do because we were talking earlier with some of the other interviews saying about how, you know, you can get by with like a little bit of talent if you have a lot of passion, but you can't get by with a ton of talent without a lot of passion. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? That's like, right. It's so true. So that's what makes you so not only do you have the talent, but you have the passion to pair with it. So And I think the two things go hand in hand. I think you do yeah. your best work when you're yeah. in love with the thing you're doing. Exactly, you know? exactly. Let's talk Fifth Beetle. Great, because yeah. that's a tremendous project. Let's say from start to finish, what's the timeline on this? When did this idea yeah, so, rise? So when it's it based on the life of Brian Epstein, who was the Beatles manager. And I actually started researching this story literally 25 years ago uh, when I was in business school, 1991. I was at the Wharton School of Business, dreaming of a life in the arts and entertainment industries. Um, Wharton these days has, ref has resources for kids who are interested in those fields. In 1991, not so much. Um, so I really had to take it on my own to, to do that kind of study and to find that sort of inspiration. And believing that the Beatles and Brian Epstein, their manager, were the team that wrote and then rewrote the rules of the pop music business, I thought I should study his life. So that's how it began, just purely out of personal interest, trying to find a, a reference point for, as a business student. Um, and while I was doing that, I did get all the great Beatles stories. I found out how he got them a record deal when no one wanted to sign them, how he convinced Ed Sullivan to book them when a British band had never made an impact in the United States, how he came up with the suits and the haircuts. 
these were the stories as a business student that I was after. Yeah. But when I uncovered his personal life, mm -hmm. he was gay at a time where it was against the law. It was literally a felony. Two men holding hands walking down the street in Liverpool would have been thrown in jail. It's crazy. Um, he was Jewish at a t period of rampant anti-Semitism, much more pervasive than it is today. And he was from Liverpool. And in 1961, prior to the Beatles ascending, um, Liverpool was a port town that had no cultural influence whatsoever. So Brian was a gay Jewish kid. He was 26 years old, running around a dirty port town in the north of England, saying, I found a local rock and roll band who are going to be bigger than Elvis. Yeah. They're going to elevate pop music into an art form, you mm -hmm. know? And people laughed at him. They said, that dream is crazy, and people like you don't do things like this. Mm -hmm. And I would never claim to have had the, the, the obstacles in my life that Brian had. But uh, as it, when I was found myself a young Indian kid uh, who didn't want to be a doctor or an engineer or work for the family business, I wanted to write comic books and produce Broadway musicals. You know, the example of Brian Epstein of to chase your dreams, no matter who you are, no matter how unlikely those dreams might seem, was very powerful, you know? So in some ways I've been, now to answer your question, <laughs> in some ways I've been chasing that story for 25 years because it's a, a story that, that's part. really like close to my heart. Yeah, that's very relevant though to the timeline because one of the big things we've been talking about to people at the con this year with Baltimore being our home con is really trying to help get the people who are watching our channel the, the comic fans the people that want to break into this industry help them find their way yeah. in and who and better it, to inspire it, it them success time. stories it takes time. like that i mean it was 25 years ago that i began the research on the book but it was about a decade ago still a decade yeah. that i began to work on this graphic novel mm -hmm. you know it took several years to do the research uh to get the historical references right mm -hmm. um just to get the script to a place where i loved it mm -hmm. and then uh you know i turned it over to andrew robinson the artist mm -hmm. obviously we collaborated so it wasn't exactly mm -hmm. turning it over but but, you know, then Andrew came in and Andrew painted every page of this book. Um, I had nothing to do with the art, so I'm not patting myself on the back when I say that it's breathtaking. But it took him four and a half years to paint. And, and, it, and you could see why. But when you flip through it, it's, it's truly gorgeous. Um, but it takes time. You know, I encourage you to, to if you're passionate about something, chase that dream. But but. You know, it, it, you might need to work your tail off for it, you know? Patience Andrew is and everything. I worked a combined 10 years on this book. Yeah. But and this hit print when? How long has this been in so actually in print? So it's been out for, it's almost two years. Okay. Uh, we came out, it came out in November of 2013, right before mm -hmm. the holidays in 2013. So it's very um, humbling to me to see that people are still buying it and discovering it and it, that it's still continuing to be talked about. It's been yeah. a real joy. And isn't this book being talked about in beyond book form right yes, now? Yes, yes. We are very aggressively pursuing a film version. Which is super um, exciting. Very, very exciting. And a lot going on for the film. I've written the screenplay myself. Uh, we, this year we secured our financing from a company called I Am Global. Um, Simon Cowell has come on board as a co-producer. She's been amazing. And um, probably most exciting, we have uh, secured Beatles music. You know, the, it, we are the first film in history that the band signed off on. That's about, so the tremendous. first film about their history. Yes, about them. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you look at other Beatles films like Backbeat or Nowhere Boy, right. with no disrespect intended to those films, you'll see there's no Beatles music in those films. Right. So we're very proud of that. That's super and, um, exciting. We're out to directors now. Uh, by the end of the year, I hope we'll be able to announce our director and uh, we hope to move forward into shooting next year. Movies are a little unpredictable, but uh, but we're on, on track so far. That's and, so tremendous. I mean, that's just got to be, I mean, first of all, when do you even rest? I'm just thinking about like all this going on, all these projects. It's, it's enough to just have a book that came out two years ago and to still be promoting that, you know, in this industry. There's so much competition. But to be having that and then already be moving on to the next phase, like how do you balance it? You know, I just, it's like when you do what you love, I guess it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like work, you yeah. know? And in and, and a similar note, like the thing I adore most in the world is my family. You know, my wife and my kids are my top priority. That's you know, awesome. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in, right after this interview, probably, I'm gonna check the time and I gotta hop on a train to get back to New York to see my kids. Oh, and, that's fantastic. And if I get, if I get, make the train, I'll, I'll yeah. be, be home before they go to sleep, uh -oh. you know? And I would love to spend another night and I love mm -hmm. Baltimore, it's right. an amazing city. I'd love to have more fun here, yeah. but I also, I got to go home and see my kids. I think that's great. So you Never just you find that. a way. You just yes, find a way. Yes. You well, prioritize it and you find a way. Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So back with what we were saying before, before we give you a chance to promote everywhere we can find out more about this yeah. and about you, is we touched on it a little bit, but if you could give one piece of advice to 
everyone out there that is just trying to break into this industry. I know you mentioned about know that it might be a little hard work, but if, if you, even if it was you talking to your former self and saying, let me prepare yeah. you for this aspect, what would it be? Well, I, I always say that the message of the Brian Epstein story, the message of the Fifth Beatle, is that no dream is too impossible and no person too unlikely to realize that dream. So it starts there. It's like figure out what your dream is, what your passion project is, and then chase that passion project with as much persistence as you possibly can. And just know that it's going to take a lot of time. So that's like the heart of the advice. Um, but the, the other thing that I would say is do it yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you really love something, dive in and do it. Yeah. You know, don't, if you want to break into comics, don't try to be like, I got to figure out my pitch so I can get into Marvel and DC and how do I open the door to that? And oh, it feels so impossible. So I got, yeah. I'm going to give it up. You know what? Yeah. Like if you want to work for Marvel and DC, great, but start on your own. Yeah. Don't wait around for somebody to give you the job. Yeah. You know, make your own comics, release yeah. them digitally, or there's a number of ways to do it, but just dive in and do it yourself. Just start doing it. That's awesome. I think that's tremendous advice. So since we want you to make that train and the con Thank is wrapping you. up, no, I've got time. I want to make sure Thank get you. the word out to all of our Comic Wild fans exactly where they can follow you on social media, where they can find out more about the projects you're working on, and keep in touch with all this progress. So let yeah, them know. Yeah, thank you for Bro, asking. Yeah. So um, we are online at fifthbeetle.com. Uh, the Fifth Beetle is also on Facebook and on Twitter at, at Fifth Beetle. Um, uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at, at Vivek J. Tawari, and I'm also on Facebook. And I, 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 friend, I, I accept all friend requests. I love talking about what I do. I'm very passionate about my projects. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Facebook, Twitter, online. And um, and we have a mailing list that you can also sign up for at fifthbeetle.com to get all the breaking news about the project. Well, so listening thank you. to you talk about it isn't enough to get everybody else out there and want to get a copy. I, I don't know so. what will convince I them because so. I always say a good interview for me is when I hear the person talk and I'm like, oh, I've got to get that book. I've got to get that thank book. You. And well, I feel is, like that listening to you it talk. It is available everywhere. You should be able to find it at your local comic shop. Um, online, it's at Amazon and IndieBound. Um, and uh, I would be honored if you'd pick up a copy. All right. Well, fantastic. Thanks for taking the time. I hope Thanks you get time, home me. in time to see your kids tonight. I will. That's the plan. And for Comic Well, until next time, this is Vivek Tuari. I'm Gigi. Thank you, guys. And you're welcome.